Happy Wednesday, everyone. We got a fun little ascending ladder save for you guys today. So it's going to climb up, 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 and up. Before we talk about that, though, let's talk about a warm up. Inchworm side plank, three to five a side. Plank lean for two to down dog for three. Uh, in terms of that nice cycle there, dynamic triangle for three to five a side. Plank shoulder touch to bear squat for three or to down dog, depending on what you're more comfortable with. That's up to you. So hit that up for one to two rounds. That's going to get that upper body, those shoulders really fired up and ready to go before we start tossing around a dumbbell on the bottom piece here. Now this bottom piece is going to just work on that dumbbell snatch again. We did them earlier in the week, but it's a little lighter with that shoulder press. So today is a chance if you'd like to go a little heavier, you're more than welcome to play around that heavier dumbbell snatch. So what we have is a dumbbell sumo deadlift for three, into a dumbbell sumo deadlift high pull for two, and a dumbbell snatch for one. Now remember, you can use the same complex um, to change the reps around so that closer to the workout, maybe you're doing one deadlift, two sumo deadlift high pulls, and three snatches. So it gives you a chance to tweak those numbers to work on what you need to focus on. Maybe you do need to work on that sumo deadlift, that leg drive just a little bit more than the actual snatch. Maybe keep it the way that the numbers are and give yourself what you need for your work set. Once you're done that complex, we're going to move into our lateral speed jump for 20 seconds to work on some lateral kind of explosiveness. And then replacing that lateral ski jump with a style of jump that you are going to do and use in the workout. So that could be a box jump, step up, a vertical power jump, whatever that happens to be. We'll put that into this piece here. And we'll hit this up anywhere from two to three, maybe even four rounds to see how you're feeling. Our workout today, it's relatively quick, all right, but that ascending ladder does slow things down a little bit. What we have is a 4, 8, 12, 16, 20 total rep count. You're gonna do four dumbbell snatches, total count, four box jumps. 8, 8, 12, 12, 16, 16, 20, 20, done. And you're gonna finish with that big walk in 20 sets. Now the loading for this, by the time you get to that 16 and 20, you might not be able to go unbroken. Maybe you do, that's okay. But if you go a little heavier today, it's okay to break up those bigger sets, but you should have a weight that you can still throw around for I'd say the, the four and eight. You should be able to do one broken and then maybe have to break them up from there. It's gonna be a fun little work set, a little bit different on the mindset because we're going up in the numbers, but I have faith in all of you. Let's warm up, let's get you ready, we'll have some fun. All right, you guys, let's move around a little bit. Let's get our feet into those hips. We'll take the arms big and tall. We're gonna stretch it over to one side and then come back through and stretch it to the other side. We'll come back up, take it all the way out the floor, touch those toes, walk up the shins. We'll come down, framing the foot. We'll step back into our lizard, nice and square in those hips. We're gonna take that inside hand to the ceiling. We're gonna rotate four on the floor. We're gonna come back up, we're gonna rotate floor, come back up, rotate, four on the floor, and come back up. We're going to plant that hand, we're going to step back into our down dog as we reach those hips nice and high, come into that nice high hip position, back into that plank, we'll step that other foot up, nice and square in those hips, inside hand reaches, and rotate, four on the floor, we'll come back up, and rotate, back up and rotate and then take it back up to the sky. We'll plant that hand, step her back into that down dog, reaching through those hips, we'll come back into that nice plank position, pushing through the floor, we'll tiptoe those feet up and then roll ourselves all the way up. Big tall stretch, little reach, little reach, come back down, let's take her down. All right. If you have any extra movement for yourself, please pause the video, take that down for yourself. Maybe some band work, some hip work, a little bit of ankle work, maybe ankle prep, who knows? All right, take that down. We'll come back at you with that first phase, which is going to open up that body a little bit. Okay, we're gonna start off with some inchworm side planks. So that's gonna start in a standing position on each rep. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it all the way down to nice and just trying to stretch out the hamstrings a bit. I'm gonna walk my hands out into my plank, and as I get here, I'm gonna rotate either bladed feet into a side plank, or I'm going to just play around with that stacked footed position. So if you 
want to use that bladed position, it makes for a slightly smoother kind of rotation and flow. So if you want to stack those feet on top of each other, okay by me. Now, if that side plank though is a little bit tough, all right, what we can also work on is that good hinge. We walk our hands out into our plank. We lower the knee, turn, open up into that side plank, come back through, plank, knee down, turn, nothing wrong with using that supported side plank in that movement. So we'll walk ourselves out, hit a plank, hit a plank, walk ourselves back up, one rep. We'll do that three to five per side. Really embracing and enjoying that walk out and hitting that really good inchworm. Now from here what we're going to work on is our plank lean to down dog. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to face the camera for this one. I'm in nice and set in that good plank position, pushing the floor away a little bit, pulling the ribs in in my strong plank. I'm going to continue pushing the floor away as I lean to the left, and then I'm going to take it over, lean to the right, I'll come back to center, making sure the shoulders are strong, pull back into that down dog, that nice high hip, I'll come back into my plank, reset the core, shoulders, and then do it again. The main focus here with this is making sure we're pushing through the floor, pushing through the floor, coming back to center, and then finding that really nice plank position, or sorry, down dog position in that shoulder. So we're always thinking about that active shoulder and keeping those shoulders stacked over top of the hands as I shift from side to side. Once we're done that, we're gonna move into our dynamic triangle. So we're gonna give our hands a little bit of a break. We're gonna stand up in our sumo stance. One toe is gonna to go directly to the side. The other heel is gonna be kicked out. One hand's gonna to be to the thigh, the other hand is gonna reach way up to the ceiling. I'm gonna pull my hip back, which is gonna take my body on that nice angle. And I'm gonna reach my arm to the ceiling and then come all the way back up. So we wanna make sure that that pull, that hinge is being initiated through the hip, which is gonna take my body under that nice angle. While my arm, regardless of the orientation of my torso, my arm is always reaching to the ceiling the entire time. So nice and active. Because we want to imagine that we're loading that dynamic triangle just a little bit. So we can kind of imagine that more if we want. We can lightly load it as well when we do those dynamic triangles to give us a little bit of strengthening aspect in that position. Now our last movement in this work set is a plank shoulder touch to bear squat. So I'm going to get myself established in my nice plank position. My feet will be above my squat stance. And I'm going to shift my weight a bit, touch the shoulder, Shift, touch the shoulder, reset the shoulders, pull my hips to my ankles, press them down into the floor with those shoulders, and come back up into my plank position. Resetting, shoulder, shoulder, bear, as I pull my hips towards my heels. Now with the bear squat, we want to actively press downwards with those arms and hands into the floor to make sure we're stabilizing the shoulder with everything we can so we can pull those hips straight back towards our ankles. Now if you're more comfortable going into the down dog, totally fine with that. Shoulder touch, shoulder touch, down dog, instead of the bear squat. So remember with the down dog, hips are going up and high. Bear squat, hips are going low. So keep those in mind. The bear squat is a little bit more stressful in that shoulder position uh, than the down dog is, but it offers a really nice opportunity to open up those hips, knees, and ankles along with strengthening that shoulder position. As a quick recap, we have our inchworm side plank for three to five a side, plank lean to down dog for three, dynamic triangle for three to five a side, and a plank shoulder touch to bear squat for three. So a nice opportunity to play with some really good heat in the shoulder at a full range of motion. We have one to two rounds of that work set. Let's take that down, get our shoulders, get our core prepped, and we're gonna start playing around with the dumbbell. All right, we're gonna kickstart off our next phase with the dumbbell work. We're gonna work that complex we know and love for our dumbbell uh, snatches. So I'm gonna stand over top of this dumbbell. It's gonna cut my foot in half. I'm standing nice and open through those hips, and I'm gonna draw my hips back, and I'm gonna lower down, keeping my chest up, my hips a little low, and my body as square as I can. 
And with my head lift, I'm gonna push through those legs, opening up through those hips, making sure that I'm really feeling that leg drive. So I'm really embracing the push with the leg. Now my second breath, I can take down to wherever I feel comfortable below my knee, so I can maintain my back position and a strong midsection. Pushing through, and I'll rock three reps of that. From there, I'm gonna set that same position up, but I'm gonna work on my sumo deadlift high fall. So I'm gonna work on getting that dumbbell towards the armpit in that high and outside position. Building speed through the middle with that leg. So I'm gonna take it down, I'm gonna get set, I'm gonna push through those legs, build some speed, yep. And then guide the dumbbell up and then come back down. So again, I'm not using the arm too much to pull the dumbbell, I'm just guiding it and then letting it come back down close to the body. Now my last rep, I have a dumbbell snatch. And I'll do the first one facing the camera, second one from the side. So I'm gonna take myself down to that starting position, I'm gonna push through those legs, build speed, and pull underneath that dumbbell and punch overhead. So I'm carrying through that momentum from the high pull, following through to go overhead in that strong overhead position. Now we wanna make sure we keep the dumbbell close, and that's what you'll see from this angle here. I take it down, push through the legs, keep the dumbbell nice and close to my body, finishing in that strong overhead position. It's the same position I would use if I was doing shoulder press, push press, jerk. It's that nice strong overhead position with the arm slightly behind the ear. So we're in a nice overhead position the entire time. Use that complex. Once you're done on one side, repeat on the other side. Then we're gonna move into our lateral ski jump to get some lateral explosive movement in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get ourselves set. I'm gonna gather everything up on this one leg. I'm gonna swing my arms and leap or reach with that leg, swing, jump, swing, jump. I'm gonna give myself a little pause each time I get to the side to control that lateral energy to build that stability in the knee. If you're looking at that going, ooh, okay, uh, yeah, no, not gonna jump. You can do that with a step, so you can get that same motion, the swing step, swing step, and you can get that same power generation, but not having to have any impact beneath the ground or whatnot. If you're looking at starting to get that jump, just because we start jumping doesn't mean we have to go max distance. We could start here and here and work on little jumps back and forth. And over time, as that knee gets more stable and strong, we'll be able to extend that jump a little further and really work on getting a bit more explosive as we go. But take it at the stages that you're ready and you wanna play with slowly and steadily. As a quick recap, we have a dumbbell sumo deadlift high pull for three, sorry, a dumbbell sumo deadlift for three, then a dumbbell sumo deadlift high pull for two, dumbbell snatch for one, repeat on the opposite side, lateral ski jump for 20 seconds, just dynamic moving back and forth. And remember, if you'd like to tweak that complex to reflect what you need to work on the most, please do so. Change those reps around. Maybe the first round go three, two, one, then maybe one, two, three, you know, one, three, one, who knows? Whatever you need to focus on, put that emphasis into that complex. Pause the video, take that down, figure out your working weight, get yourself ready to go. We're gonna talk about the workout that's just around the corner. All right, we made it to the work set, you guys. We've warmed up that dumbbell snatch, we've figured out our working weight. Now there's only one piece of the puzzle we haven't talked about yet, and that's the box jump or the box jump options. So our workout today is an ascending ladder, four, eight, 12, 16, and 20. Dumbbell snatch alternating and box jump. So we covered the dumbbell snatch pretty heavily in that previous warm up piece. So if you need some points of performance, scroll back, check that out. Refresh your mind with that before we start the work set. But the box jump, we have some different options here. So if you have an apparatus that you can do jumps on, or you're comfortable with, awesome. Doesn't have to be high, but whatever you're comfortable jumping on. What we're looking at doing is drawing those hips back into that power position, using those arms to help as well to get a little bit of momentum in the body. But we're hitting that power position that we would use in a kettlebell swing, vertical power jump, broad jump. It's all the same kind of start position that we're gonna use for this. The only difference is, is we're jumping up onto something. So we get relatively close to the box, about a foot away. I'm gonna swing jump, stand tall, and I'll step down. So I'm gonna work on that nice explosive jump, 
and that controlled step down to protect my feet, my ankles, and my knees. Now, if you're looking at that going, my apparatus is not jump worthy, all right? That's okay. You could work on a step up if you like, so coming to full extension, working on getting all the way up in that step up the whole time. Or you can work on a lateral step over, which is always fun. Pop ourselves over, back and forth, keeping in mind that this foot can stay on the box or the apparatus that you're using to prevent tripping. All right, it also helps work on ankle mobility as well. But just remember when we take this, we leave this on the box, that knee stays stacked over top of the heel. We're not trying to let it follow and get into this kind of compromised position. We want to stay relatively close to the box when we do those things, all right? If you don't have an apparatus you're comfortable doing those things on, we have a couple different options. We have our vertical power jump, which when we do that, we get ourselves set up, we swing into that power position, we drive into that vertical jump. My eyes are going to be looking slightly forward and down to keep myself in a stable position. I'm just going to do three right now for you. I swing back, up, 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 and I always land with that soft rebound. So my suggestion in these jumps, do small sets so that you can control the jump, you can control the mechanics, and you keep them looking sharp. Now if you're not looking at doing that, what we can also work on is a broad jump. So if you have space, we use the same hip hinge mechanic into that power position, Except we jump forward and we still land in that power position, trying to land soft like a ninja because we want to lessen the amount of impact on the ankles, knees, hips as we do these jumps. Now keeping in mind those broad jumps, they're challenging, they're tough. You don't have to jump maximum distance every time unless you want to. You can take them a little shorter, you can use them for whatever range, whatever length you'd like to jump at. I'll have some other options there for you guys as well in the workout description if you'd like to play with those, but those are some really good ones that kind of give you that same emphasis of the box jump, just a little bit different. Personally, I'd rather box jump than broad jump. Broad jumps are tough, but I love them all the same. So just keep that in mind. You might feel that they're a little slower or they're a little more tiring. It's because they are. They're a little bit tougher, more, more energy output than a box jump. So please enjoy them, have fun with them if you're gonna use them, and don't shy away from them because they're a nice option. I hope you have fun with this one, you guys. It's not too long of a workout, but it's gonna be a fun chance to work on some explosiveness and really tackle a little bit of explosiveness with that leg drive in the dumbbell snatch. So work for quality, have a ton of fun. We'll see you tomorrow for a fun Thursday workout. Bye, you guys.